Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to answer a question that came in from Scott. Scott has been finding fishing reels at a flea market, uh, a couple of flea markets out on the west coast, and he sent me two reels. So this is a tale of two reels. We have the uh, Penn 6.0. It's a Senator. It's a large reel made for big game fishing. And on this one, well, it seems to be working properly. A nice loud click. Got a drag that holds. Everything seems to be good, and just in terms of a need of a tune-up. Well, and then he said, sent me this one. It says, why is this one quiet? Well, that's going to be a good question. Now, the, the anti-reverse tends to hold, and that click, click, click that you hear is normally the anti-reverse dog wrapping against the click on the uh, spool sleeve. The other issue is, well, it doesn't have a drag washer. No matter how you try to tighten this down, well, it's not tightening. So something's going on in this reel that's incorrect. As a matter of fact, if you, uh, uh, if you look at this, there is a little bit of a difference design in that, um, that drag stack. This is an older reel. And uh, we'll see what's going on here. So we're going to start by taking off the pieces and parts. And as we do, I'm going to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you do subscribe, please hit that notification button. This channel is more than just fixing a pen reel, or fixing any reel for that matter. I tend, tend to cover an awful lot of topics, many of them fishing reel related, but not necessarily the actual diagnostics and repair of a fishing reel, which is what we're going to do today. I work on all kinds of reels, and what you're essentially seeing when you watch one of my videos is the reels that come into my shop and uh, how I go about taking them apart, servicing them, and repairing them, and in some cases, how I go about determining what's wrong in order to make that, uh, that repair proper. It's all in the sense of teaching you how to do it yourself. So if you like that, whether it's an ocean-going reel, or a freshwater ultralight reel, or uh, bait caster spinning reels, it doesn't matter. Uh, whatever's showing up in my shop, and we're here on a on the East Coast, North, uh, North Atlantic, Northeast, and uh, I'm all too happy to share my experiences with you in the hopes that you'll give your reels a second chance, which is, well, that's what we're called, second chance tackle. I'm just uh, buffing off some of the um, accumulated dried grease and maybe even some of the old fish scales and things like that that's on here while I do it, because when you clean and service a fishing reel, you want to do it, do it all. Don't just run in and try and find out what the broken part is and replace that. Take your time. Fishing reel repair is about uh, taking the reel apart, examining all the pieces and parts, checking for uh, issues, and uh, replacing any worn parts, and of course, cleaning out the old grease and bringing in the new oils and greases keep that reel running for some time. Well, I just took a quick peek at that drag stack. It looks like it might be right. So this is going to be an interesting find here. So my initial thought was, well, maybe we have a broken spring, and maybe we have a poorly loaded drag stack. And right now, I'm starting to move over to maybe there's some broken line inside the reel. But we're going to find out soon enough. So when you take these screws out of your reel, you're going to notice that you have four screws that are longer and three screws that are shorter. The long screws go into these crossbars as we're taking them out here. The shorter screws go into the reel seat, which is the piece down here that attaches the reel to the fishing pole. Well, I said four, there's five posts on this. But the Shorter screws are there because you don't want those screws to protrude out beyond the lip of that reel seat. Those screws standing out will trap the line and can cause a, a break off. So make sure you put them back in the right place when it's time to reassemble. Lessons learned. Somebody had done a reel, brought it in, says I keep snapping my line when I'm casting it. And sure enough, you look down below, and these were sitting out probably an eighth of an inch. And when the line was running over to that side, it was hooking. So, so you'll see these are long screws. 
when I take my pieces and parts off, they go into a parts tray, just so I know where to find them when it's time to reinstall. We got three more screws holding the side plate on, and then we have four screws holding the answer to why is this quiet as a reel. You'll see that that screw is smaller, as are the next two. I'm kind of curious about this myself. Like I said, I think I've I've started with the thought that maybe I have a weak anti-reverse spring, but as I'm looking at this, with the drag stack sitting proper, I, uh, well, I find it curious. So let's see. I'm opening it up. Well, everything inside seems to be normal. We're not seeing the uh, the broken line or anything in here, so the mystery continues. We have a couple of washers. They can come out in the front. Oh, we'll get them out the other way. Let's take the time to take a look here. Yep, we still have a... Uh, now these are the old asbestos washers and uh, you can see that uh, they're very thick. Generally speaking, they don't need maintenance. They're not permeable and uh, you would just kind of clean this up. We'll do that as part of our service, but right now what we're trying to figure out is why in the world is not it not clicking? And why isn't the drag holding? They might be interrelated. If you have a question on this reel or any reel in particular, if you leave it in the comments section, I will try to answer that question for you. I just had one, uh, somebody was asking me about the valuation of a fishing reel. I have a, they have a particular reel and they wondered what's it worth. Well, I'm not the, uh, the be all end all in terms of publications, but I know enough from my years experience I can tell you what that reel is selling for in the used market. You'll notice on these screws that we have a fully threaded screw and we have a partially threaded screw. Like many of the pen reels, the fully threaded screws go on the bottom and those partially threaded screws, they go through springs up top for the yoke. All right, the screws are all loose. We should be able to push this through. And what we're finding here is a weak spring. I think that's going to be the answer to this. That, and look at the gunk and the grease on that dog assembly. So I think what's happening is, instead of having this popping all the way up and slamming down, it's probably just moving enough marginally to make that work. Well, when we clean it up, we'll see if we can get that bang bang back, because that's the way it's supposed to work. Well, like we did with the other one, we're going to just clean this junk off of here. That's enough to to make sure that uh, this isn't moving, that's for sure. And I think you probably just had enough tension on that spring to move it a little bit. Still a mystery is why isn't the drag holding, and uh, we're going to find that out too. I'm going to uh, do a couple more things here. One, you have to take this side plate trim ring off in order to get the gear out. Just lay that off to the side. Next off, we can push down on the pinion gear and the yoke assembly, and we can remove the jack, the pinion gear, and the yoke. And this, this is telling right here, you can see how all that dry grease is affecting the gear itself. And we'll just take a moment. I'm using 4 row steel wool here that will help get the old grease off, and it will certainly increase the performance of the reel when it's time to reinstall. All right. And you can see we have another one of these very thick washers. There should be one more washer here. That's normally the way it works. Two thicks, thick washers and a thin washer. I am not seeing the thin washer and it might very well be the, uh, the answer to why you're not getting enough pressure on it. There's two large springs that are the yolk springs. We go in the cavity here. The bearing came out. That's all right. We might just go right back in. And let's see what we have underneath here. Oh, we have that third thick washer. So we'll clean these up and put these back. I think we uh, we have two of them, the three. Yeah, these, this is what we should have in the drag stack. 
I'm going to just take a moment here. There's a couple of things going on with this one. That grease, whatever that grease was that was being used, doesn't appear to be fishing meal grease. You can see on my protective glove, it's very sticky and, and gooey, almost like a, an axle grease or something. So I'm going to use a penetrating oil. It's just your hardware store variety penetrating oil. It's nothing special. I think this one came from Ace Hardware. I'm not particular on my penetrating oils only because the only purpose it serves to me is as a general degreaser. I do not use it as a lubricant. And uh, you can see all of the old greases that are just coming out and coming onto my paper towel. And I do that to keep that stuff off my bench. I don't want to transfer that as I go to rebuild the reel. And I don't want to have it interfere with the uh, performance of the next reel that I service. Look at this. This is how it's accumulated here. It's, it's actually built up a pile of grease. I'm just using the side of a screwdriver here to, to kind of scrape it off. And again, back onto the paper towel so it doesn't go onto my workbench. It doesn't affect the overall conditioning. And then light, light coat of the penetrating oil, paper towel. I try to do the least abrasive method possible when I'm cleaning the parts. I don't like to, to just um, go right in and, and scrape or use a, a heavy abrasive. Even the steel wool is the finest steel wool possible. It's, on, it's a 4-0 steel wool. All right, so that main gear is clean now. That makes me feel better. There's the last of those four screws. That'll go into my case. Let's wipe down the outside of this case. And yeah, you can just see whatever this is, it's not real good. And apparently, that's that's what's causing that anti-reverse dog to stick. Well, we'll just do a little bit more cleaning on this. Then we're going to go ahead and show you how to service the reel. We've kind of been showing you how to take it apart. We've talked a little bit about how to service the drag washers. And we've, uh, I think we're solving the mystery, which is just really thick, non fishing reel grease. All right, bearings, I oil bearings. So I'm just going to soak that with a fishing reel oil. Put our little anti-reverse dog off to the side. And now it's time to take the gear sleeve off because, well, we know we've got a whole bunch of bad grease on the side of it and underneath it. Now you can't let that be as part of the surface. Well, I, every now and then you get a stubborn one of these where you can't push it through with hand strength. What I like to do there is just set it up, use a pick and a dead blow hammer, kind of knock it through. And it'll take a little while. It's a balancing act because of the way that Okay, with a little bit of effort, you will be able to knock that pin through. Don't be afraid if it comes all the way out. You'll just reset it going back in. I just like to leave it there if I can. And then you should be able to remove the sleeve. And you can see that's the, uh, that's the cause of the no click. Everything is just so tight that that anti-reverse dog is moving fractionally as opposed to moving the way it should. So, Scott, no big worries here. I am concerned why that drag is not holding and it may have something to do with this but we'll, uh, we'll make sure we clean that all up and you can see how quickly just a spray of that penetrating oil loosens that old grease and helps get it all cleaned up so when you're servicing a reel cleaning parts inspection and lubrication are the are the keys of course you want to replace anything that might be bad in there and uh, if you do that, you're going to keep that reel running for some time. Fresh grease, I get asked frequently uh, what grease I use. That's pen precision reel grease. Not because it's a pen reel, but that's the real grease that I use. I like that penetrating oil, I really don't have a preference. And uh, it works for me, so that's important. We took the grease off the bottom. I inspected that. 
you see the shed, the slot here? That's where this pin is going to ride on the inside to keep the gear sleeve uh, working properly. So let's go ahead and put that back in. Make sure we set that all the way down. And then let's just tap that pin back in. And that's a dead blow hammer so that I don't mar any of the metal surfaces that go along with this. And then this is sitting just a little proud, so I just need another little tap here. To seat it off that ridge. You don't want it on that ridge. Okay, let's rebuild the, the gear system. Then we've cleaned this. So we just want to go back to the, the grease and put the grease back on. And I put it in about four or five different spots on the main gear. You don't have to get it in every tooth. Actually, if you get it in every tooth, it's just going to spin it off. It's too much grease. But we want to get it adequate. We've cleaned the inside of that. We've got the three of these asbestos washers now. And the only thing I can think of in terms of why that drag system was not working is possible that the um, these were stuck to the shaft and not moving in and out. I'm just going to use a piece of steel wall to brush off some of that exterior. You could also use a flat file like this. As I mentioned, this is asbestos. It's a very heavy and hard material. So let's keep it flat to the washer. You don't want to remove the material, but you do want to remove the uh, old greases or whatever might be on there. That is important. All right. That's washer number one. You can put a light coat of grease on it, but it's not going to absorb it. So you don't have to go crazy with the greases. We have three washers now. We're going to find that two of them are keyed washers or rectangular washers, and one of them is an eared washer. And I'm going to do the same thing with the metal washers that I did with the other washers, the fabric washers, if you will. And that is to make certain that the old debris, which might catch on a, on a reel, is removed. You don't want the pits on a uh, on a drag washer coming to the point where it's going to be digging into the washer rather than sliding across the washer. You're going to notice two thicknesses on the one metal washer. The, the thicker one goes up top. So we're going to put that first key washer on and do the same thing here that we did with the other one. Just try and get some of the scaling or the, the dried pieces off of there. There's a little bit going on, so it doesn't hurt to clean them up. Again, I didn't find that it wasn't holding because of it was slipping. It just wasn't engaging, so kind of fun. As I look on the inside of this, it may have been holding the post, right? All right, so that's the second one goes in now. The middle washer is always this piece called the eared washer, the one with the two points. Those two points fit in the slot on that case. And we'll just do the last one. So the Senators are big game reels. And this is the 6-0, and I would say that's probably where the big game starts. Some, some folks might say it starts with the 4-0. But you go 6-0, you can go all the way up to 16-0. I have the, the, uh, the one that's most universal, I think, is the 4-0. You can go inshore and you can go kind of offshore trolling. The 6-0 starts to get into the bigger fish. And then, of course, they're the, the prize game fish kind of stuff. They're, uh, they're up one more level. All right, that thick washer goes on now. And then there's what's called the cap washer. And that cap washer is just the outside washer for the stack. So there you go. That's the stack of that drag washer system. We've already cleaned the yoke. We haven't cleaned the pinion gear. So this is kind of rinse and repeat, right? It's, it's a lot of the same thing, just different parts. Again, because we have that kind of grease on there, we're going to use the penetrating oil. We're going to knock that off. And look, just from two, two quick shots here, well, it's all over that towel, right? So that doesn't have anything to do with the, the drags not holding or the click not clicking, but it has to do with performance. It's clogging the tracks and it's slowing performance. I'm going to take our yoke, 
assembly. You have two springs that go into the side plate. Put the grease on the yoke. I use an artist's brush to spread the grease. I like that because the hairs generally stay on the brush and they don't, uh, don't fall off and fall into places that could impair performance. All right, the yoke is done. So that sits on top of those two springs. It's a little bit of a balancing act as you go to set this. You push down, and then you take the jack and you insert that over the top, and that'll hold the assembly in place. Well, we're almost at the moment of truth now, trying to figure out is that uh, anti-reverse dog going to, to work the way it should? We're going to take the, the main bridge assembly now, push down on the pinion gear, move that assembly in, and turn the bridge plate so that you cover that pinion gear, just like that. Find the bridge screw that's got a full thread on it, and that comes into the side that's still open here. We'll get that dog. Now that dog is going to sit like this. That's how it, how it's going to hold as an anti-reverse. It's going to sit up one, but that's how it's going to work. And now this flat spring, flat spring is going to sit on top of the dog here. It's going to wrap underneath the stud and it's going to rest against the back wall. That sometimes is easier said than done. I have trouble with these. Most people do. And we're going to see if we can't get it right. So that's how it ri rides now. It's laying on top of the dog. You can see it wrapped around the stud, resting on the other side. We're going to complete the rotation on this. You want to align the bridge screw with the hole in the bridge and then give it a couple of turns. I don't like to tighten it all the way down at this point because there's three other screws to set. I like to make sure that those other screws are seated properly before I start to tighten them down. So we're going to come around to the side and this is why you can see if I had tightened that down I couldn't make the adjustment to push the bridge up here. Like that. All right, and let's get that second one started then. And just a few turns. Then we'll do the same thing with the top bridge screw here. And this one sometimes the jack gets in the way. So if you're finding that you're having trouble with that, just turn it upside down and take a check. Notice that the bearing is kind of slipping there. Don't worry about that. These, you can realign that and also you're going to have the spool is going to push that back. That's that top cover for the, um, the the drag stack. Not to worry. As I mentioned, these these this reel, this version of the reel was set up so that you could replace the drag washers without taking the side plate apart. The version that I showed you earlier, you can't do that. This is the later version and it does not have access from the outside. Okay, now these two can go in. We're going to just make sure everything is working here. And I'm going to just give it a test. Well, what's different? We now have the click, click, click. So it was the old grease that was the cause of this. And as you notice, I just turned it over and the burring just kind of fell right back into place. I'm going to clean up the old greases and dirt that's on here. Let's see if we're going to be two for two here. We're going to hope that we can get the drag washer is working as well. There's two washers that go on this. There's a thick and a thin. The thick one goes below. 
On your star, you're going to find one side of it has a part number on it. This one says 10-114. That goes below. If you take another look at it, you're going to see this is a slightly squared shoulder, and this is a rounded one. The rounded one faces out. Oops. Yeah, that's right. No oops there. I just saw the other washer. That goes this way here. Well, when we turn it now, we have that working. All right, go over to the other side. There's not much to do on the other side. There's just one burring to clean up here. We'll do that right now. Clean out any uh, grease in the light that might be in the back there. Just gonna check. It almost looks like there's no burring in this. Yep, we're okay. Sometimes the mind deceives you. Okay, let's tighten that down. Put a little oil on the back side of this. Make sure that your spool is clean on both sides. There's a little bit of old grease here, so let's get rid of that. Again, I oil the burrings. I don't grease them. Just a little bit of oil to keep that running free in a burring track. Same thing on this side. Make sure that your shoulders are clear. The inside of the spool is clean. And you can reassemble. Time to put the trim ring back on. Now on this trim ring we have a harness lug. And on this side plate there's an indentation for the harness lug. So let's go ahead and make sure that goes on properly. Wipe down this. It's a great opportunity to do that. And then we can switch this to the off position. It's easier to mount the side plate with it in the off position. I guess it actually would be the on position for free spool, but make sure it's disengaged from the spool. Right. We've got the long screws that go in the side crossbars. We have the short screws that go in the real seat. I like to start kind of a, in opposing directions. I'm going to put one on here and roll it around. And we're going to pause the video here because you don't need to see me put ten of these in. So just finishing up on that last screw now. And now uh, go to the handle. Scott asked what year. My guess is this is early 1970s. I could be off by a little bit. But uh, these reels continue to be made. So uh, we know that this one is made in, made in the U.S. It's not a Chinese made one. I think the Senators may be the only ones still left. Maybe the Senators and big internationals may be the only ones left. Uh, made in the U.S. I'm going to put that handle uh, screw on. Then the big idea here, it, that we get to click, 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 well that's that's okay, but the empty reverse was working in the other one. That, that doesn't bother you so much, but more importantly, does the drags hold? I did notice a lot of scaling on those drags. And I'm thinking maybe, just maybe, that's an issue with the dirt. We'll see. All right, you want to align the scallop on the handle screw with that indentation and screw hole for the handle lockdown screw. Now we're going to put that lockdown screw in. If this one falls on the floor, I will apologize, but I've done that more than once. This time we'll just call that a success. I'm going to tighten down the drag washer now. Let's see what we got. Now we're in the free spool. And that just spins beautifully. Scott found a nice one here. Let's go ahead and lock it in. Test that drag. Oh yeah, hey Scott, we got drags. And I'm pretty sure I'm hearing that click, click, click. So there you go. Well, you'll still be able to figure this reel out versus the other reel. The reason you're going to be able to do that is because of the bigger access point for the drag washers. And I think the other one is, I believe that uh, the handles here are the Bakelite and I believe this one may be plastic. Uh, this is a newer model. 
but uh, both of those beautiful 6.0 uh, pen reels. And uh, hey, this one's ready to go fishing again. So I hope you've enjoyed that. If you did, please like it. Again, please subscribe if you like these types of videos. And uh, to all, uh, particularly our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do. And to everyone, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.